My name is Jay Black with the Winter Springs Dental Lab and InLabOnDemand.com. First of all, I want to thank Serona for letting me present today on the InLab MCX 5 mil. I'm from Orlando, Florida. It's definitely a little bit colder here than it is over there. So a little bit about me. I graduated from University of Florida in 1997. I thought I wanted to be a dentist. Uh, my dad owned a lab. I tried out for or applied for dental school. Didn't make it. So went back and worked with my dad. He needed help. Uh, about five years ago, we had 25 employees. Um, just like most of you working late, alloy prices through the roof. I was sending all my zirconia out, uh, outsourcing everything, losing control of my lab. I had like five waxers at the time for some reason. Um, just my costs were through the roof. I nearly went bankrupt. Um, I was sleeping at the lab sometimes. I was delivering cases in the middle of the night, hiding them in the bushes. Uh, it was just terrible. I needed more control of my lab. So the biggest, uh, most important thing that I've ever done was get into the in-lab system. Fast forward to, you know, about eight months ago. Now I have 10 employees. We still do about the same amount of work, but now I love my job. Uh, everything's consistent. I'm making more money than I was before. Um, things are really going good right now. The second most pivotal, pivotal uh, event that happened in my lab was the InLab MCX5. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how I use it at my lab. And first I'm going to give you a little overview of, of how it works. All right. The most important thing is it's a five axis mill. The InLab MCXL is a four axis mill. It mills blocks and disks. It has open STL, so if you have any type of scanner, you can go ahead and design with whatever software you have, export it as an STL, and mill it in this mill. It also takes blocks and disks. The MCXL, which is the Serona's other mill, takes 35 different blocks you can mill with it. Uh, more than anybody else, but now you can mill those same blocks plus disks in this mill. It is a wet dry mill. One of the big important things about this is you don't have to do anything to change in between wet and dry mill. You literally just tell it, hey, I'm going to mill Emacs now. It knows to turn on the water. Uh, hey, I'm going to mill Zirconia now. It knows not to turn the water on. If you're going to mill wax or PMMA, it starts milling dry and then turns on the water when it needs to. So you don't have to tell the software anything. The software knows uh, when it's going to do it. It just does it. So what is five axis? We have an A and B axis and an X, Y, and Z axis. What does that all mean? It just allows you to mill bigger restorations, uh, cases with big undercuts, a bridge that's undercut. Uh, just allows you to mill more things and things actually fit um, after you mill them. So now we have something called magazines for our tools. I have uh, my first magazine, I have zirconia in spots one, two, and three, and also in four, five, and six. So let's say you're milling in the middle of the night, your burr was old or something and it broke, it would automatically go to spot number four and grab the, the spare burr. For my second magazine, I, that's called my wet magazine, I have my PMMA wet and wax in spots four, five, and six. or uh, one, two, and three, and my Emacs burrs in four, five, and six. The software lets you know, hey, you need to put in your yellow burrs or your red burrs, so it's not very difficult, and I'll go over that in a second. So red is for PMMA and wax, yellow is for zirconia, blue is for polymers, and white is for ceramics. Probably the most important part and reason that I got this mill, I was going to get some mill no matter what. I was going to get a disc miller. Thankfully, Serona came out with this one. But there's so many more things that you can do with discs. Everybody has discs, wax, temporary, zirconia, um, Bruxer, all kinds of things like that. And that was the biggest reason that I wanted to buy the disc miller. You can save a lot of money on using a disc versus a block. 
and you can get more units in it and do bigger cases. So I had to get something, and I'm glad Strona came out with this. It takes all 98 millimeter discs, which is one of the most popular discs um, that is out there. Every manufacturer will make a 98 millimeter disc. They have different heights on them. They start at 10 and go up to 30. As of right now, uh, we can accept 22 millimeter discs and in the future we'll be able to go up to 30, but most cases right now will fit in a 22 millimeter disc. Discs come in zirconia, wax, PMMA. Blocks also. So you can hold up to six C14 size blocks in this multi-block holder. So let's say you have six cases and you know, one's shade A1, one's A3, one's C2, one's D4, and one's an Empress, I12, whatever. In the middle of the night, you can go ahead and load all your blocks up, put them in where you want to, uh, in slots one through six, hit start, go home, and the next day you'll have all six blocks milled out. Yes, all ceramics will use the same burr set in the magazine. It starts off with, uh, and I'm going to go over the different burrs that it uses in a second. So if I load up my magazine with my Emacs burrs, it, say, it says, hey, put in your, your mixed magazine with your Emacs burrs, and then load up all the blocks. It will just take from those three burrs. All right, we have different processing modes. We have wet, dry, and a combined wet, dry. So all zirconia is milled dry. The water never turns on. It's just dry. For ceramics, it's only wet. So if you're going to put an Emax in there, an Empress, Lava Ultimate, Dense Bly, Obsidian, whatever you're going to put in there, it mills it wet all the time. If you're going to mill wax or PMMA, what it does is it starts off milling dry. And then when it does the margins and some of the occlusion, the water turns on to give a nicer uh, surface texture. You don't have to worry about any of that, it just does it. It's very easy to clean. It does come with a suction unit, which we'll talk to you about. Um, the suction will only come on during zirconia, and it turns on and off constantly. So like if it's going to change the burr or something like that, it's not going to, it turns off during that point. One more thing, whenever, let's say, you're milling a wax or something like that, after you're done milling, I usually just take a paper towel, wipe out the inside, wipe off the disc holder, and then if I want to do a zirconia disc next, I just put the zirconia disc in. I don't have to make any adjustments to the inside of the machine, don't have to do anything, just literally put the next disc in, hit mill. Then after I'm done with zirconia, if I want to mill an Emax, I just put the Emax in, and hit mill. You don't have to make any adjustments to the inside of the chamber or anything. Only thing you'll have to do is change the burrs. All right, here's our different tools that we have. For zirconia, wax, PMMA, it starts off with a 2.5 millimeter burr. Then it goes to the 1.0 and then the 0 0.5. Backwards. All right, for our wet milling, for grinding, we have diamonds. As of today, we have a 2.2 millimeter, 1.4, and a 1.2 millimeter. Some technical data. It's very heavy compared to the MCXL. It's about 200 pounds, very heavy duty. It has a high frequency spindle of 60,000 RPMs. But the most important thing is you have to have a compressor for it. The compressor does a lot of things, but it also helps to hold in the burrs as it picks them up. Most dental compressors go up to 100 PSI that are in a dental office. You need to make sure you have one that goes to 102, not 101 or 100 and a half. It has to be minimum 102. If it doesn't, if it goes below 102 at any time, the machine will stop and you'll get an error. So just make sure you have constant flow going. Comes with an external suction tank and a coolant tank. I change my bag and my suction unit maybe every couple weeks. 
and I change the water in my coolant unit every couple weeks as well. If you're not doing the milling a disc all day, you don't have to do it as often, but I like to, uh, to keep mine nice and clean. The software also will give you notices every, like, for me every day, say, says, hey, go ahead and clean your spindle today. So it's a very fast process, takes like two minutes. You just go to configuration and service, click on spindle maintenance, it moves the spindle up to the front, and it, there's a, we have videos and it, there's a little diagram of how to do it. You just take out the chuck, clean it real quick, grease it, put it back in, and hit okay. It takes like two minutes, but we do that uh, every day. And again, the most important thing is the pressure. I have mine set to about 110, between 110 and 120 PSI. All right, for a computer, it's recommended that you have the latest in-lab computer. Um, you don't have to. I know people that have it on a different computer, but I like to keep mine, my uh, CAM software on a separate computer compared to my design computers, but you can have it on the same one, but I'd rather just keep it separate, and I bought a separate computer for that. All right, the mill comes with CAM software. CAM software, if you're familiar with the in-lab software already, is similar to stack mill, but now it's just called CAM software. It's very easy to use. After you design in the in-lab or 3Shape or whatever, then you're going to open up your CAM software. And if you design the case in in-lab, your case will already be there. If you design the case in 3Shape or whatever else, all you have to do is import that STL case. All right, let's say we're loading a disk for the first time. It's very easy to do. First thing you do, manufacturer's name, be it Ivoclar, Densply, whoever you want. It doesn't matter. You're not locked into any particular company. Uh, if it's, let's say, Bruxer, you would type in miscellaneous here. Material name, zirconia, blank size. On the side of the blank, it'll say how tall it is, whether it's 10 up to 22 millimeters. Um, the most common Bruxer that I use is size 15. It's like 175 bucks from, I get it from Glidewell, you can get it from Zahn, I think. Um, so it's 175 bucks for a 15 millimeter. On the side right here, it says blank ID. Very important is on the side of your disc, whatever you write right here, you need to write on the side of the disc. So I write, on, so in the brand new Bruxer A2 15 millimeter, I write Bruxer 15 A2 dash number three. Then my next A2 disc will be Bruxer 15 A2 disc number four. Because you're gonna have like 25 discs sitting all over the place, and then it's easy if you just look on the side of the, the disc and pick that particular one. Lot number, if you would like to keep track of those things, you can go ahead and type the lot number of each particular disc in case a year down the road something happens and you needed to check up the lot number. All right, next is the enlargement factor or magnifi magnification factor. What that is with zirconia is when you mill it out, it mills out larger than the final product's gonna be. Every zirconia has different shrinkage rate depending on the material or the lot. On the side of every block, there's a number like star Z24503. That means it's gonna mill out 24.50% larger than the final product's gonna be. So that when it shrinks down to the centering oven, it knows exactly how much, to sh how much to make it larger when it mills. Same thing with the disc, on the disc, on the side usually, or on the top, it'll have a one point something. Like Bruxer is usually 1.223. You just have to type that number right here twice so it knows to mill it out, over mill it out that percentage. If you put the wrong number in right there, it's not gonna fit after it, after it centers. Next, it'll also say if it fits in the disc or not. So if it doesn't fit, it'll say no then you need to use a bigger disc. 
and material class. It'll have a yellow, red, blue, or white um, little box right there. So that way you know, hey, I need to put my yellow burrs in, or I need to put my white burrs in or my red burrs in. All right, once we choose our disc, next thing we're going to do is we're going to position our crowns in the, in the puck. The software is just going to throw them in there where it thinks it's most optimized, but you have the ability to move them 360 degrees, move them anywhere in the block you want. For large bridges, there is a centering bar that it puts on automatically. If you do not want that centering bar, you just right click on the bridge and unclick the centering bar and it goes away. But I recommend if the software thinks you need that centering bar on there, you keep it on there. So you'll mill it out, center it, and I'll show you a picture of it uh, in a second. All right, next. Again, you can move it in the X, Y position. If it turns red, that means it does not fit in the block. If it turns dark red, it won't let you mill. But if it just turns red, you still can mill it. So let's say I have a real tall six unit bridge full zirconia, but I only have a 15 millimeter block or disc left and it says it doesn't fit. I'm gonna go ahead and position it like this. You can move it up and down in the disc. So I'll position it so at least all my margins mill out and maybe I'll miss the incisal ledge of number eight or something like that, but it'll still let you go ahead and mill. This is really important, uh, Z-axis positioning. There's a lot of new products coming out on the market this year with zirconia, um, multi-layered zirconia or multi-layered temporaries. And with the Z-axis, you can move it up and down and get more incisal or less incisal in the disc, which is pretty cool. All right. After you position the crowns where you want, you're gonna go ahead and put the sprues on there. The software will automatically just put some sprues where it thinks it needs to be, but then you, it's your decision to figure out if it's the right place to put them or not. You can delete a sprue, add a sprue, or move a sprue. Next, you have milling options, sprue tapering. I sprue taper all of my cases. What that means is the software will go ahead and taper the sprue down, and I have a picture of it I'll show you in a second, so it's easier to cut out of the disc. You always want to have three sprues per single unit if you're going to sprue taper. If you want to just use one sprue, you can't sprue taper because it's going to fall out when it goes to taper that sprue. You can use one sprue if you uncheck the sprue tapering um, little box here. All right. Next thing you do, you have three options for production strategy. You have rough, fine, and extra fine. Rough is used only for, let's say, a zirconia coping. It mills out a coping maybe like 10 minutes if you choose rough. The inside of the zirconia will always be milled with a one millimeter burr, but the outside is where this all comes into play. So if you just want a quick, fast coping um, out of the mill, choose rough, it's about 10 minutes. The outer surface is gonna be rough looking, but who cares, you're gonna layer ceramic on it anyway. So that's the only time I would use that. Fine and extra fine we use for full contour, or let's say a wax coping, I want it to be fine, I don't want it to be rough. Um, but extra fine will use the 0 0.5 millimeter burr, so you want to use that for all your full contour and things that you want nicer anatomy in. But if you just want it quickly done, just choose fine and it's just not gonna be as detailed uh, anatomy wise. Same thing for blocks. Go ahead and choose your block. Position it in the spot you want. You can hold up to six at a time. You tell it where you want it to go. Then you restoration position, same thing. You put the sprue, mesial, distal, buccal, lingual, doesn't matter, wherever you want. Then you can move it up and down in the block. So like Vita Trilux Forte has different, uh, has like dentin and incisal in the same block. You can put more incisal, less incisal, whatever you want. And then choose fine or extra fine. All right, so here's my lab. I have, or 
the main heart of my lab. This is my cave where I spend most of my time. We have one X5 scanner. We have an Ineos Blue I haven't used in a couple of years. I have bought an Omnicam. Um, I take it out to my train dentist on it. Um, that's how I also get Serac Connect clients. I'll say, hey, you know, come over here. I'll teach you how to use the software and use your machine, things like that. I also take it to different dental offices and do same day cases. I have uh, two MCXLs. My MCXLs just mill Emacs all day, all day long. That's all I mill in them. Uh, never going to get rid of them because I can mill an Emacs in 10 minutes. So my MCX5s, again, that's the best thing that ever happened to my lab is this mill. I mean, I can mill so many units out of these mills, it's unbelievable. Everything fits perfect. Um, the products, the different discs I can buy now are endless. Everybody has like the coolest, best looking material out now and it's a lot cheaper. I mean, I can mill a Bruxer for $7. I can mill a Zirconia coping for $4. I can mill a wax coping for about 65 cents. Uh, temporary for about $3. So, I mean, that's crazy. And it's fast. It mills very fast. I can mill a, a roundhouse temporary in like 130 minutes or so. What I do is I come in about 7.30 in the morning. I start scanning like three big cases. And then at about 8 o'clock, my assistant NG comes in. So then I switch over to this computer. I have all my computers and my lab network together, so I just go to that other computer, grab the files, start designing those cases. Then she'll start scanning all the Bruxers in. We like to do the Bruxers or full zirconia in the morning so that we can center them overnight on the longer cycle. So she'll start scanning and designing as she goes. After I finish my big cases or my harder cases, I'll go ahead and grab the connect cases that came in uh, through Serona Connect. I'll design those. Once I'm done with those, I'll go ahead and grab some cases that she hasn't finished yet. So we'll mill zirconia first, full zirconia first. Uh, then we'll do Emacs nonstop. And overnight, we always do our zirconia copings and our wax. Next morning, we'll cut out all the zirconia and fire them on like program two on the in-fire super speed. It's like an hour, a little over an hour cycle. But Bruxer, you have to fire overnight on the 10-hour cycle or they look like crap. So you've got to follow the manufacturer's uh, recommendations for that. So PFMs, we still do about 20% PFMs. This is the sprue tapering I was talking about. This is not sprue tapered right here. So for all my wax, I just take a sharp uh, Bard Parker blade and just cut those little areas and the little wax falls right out. I try not to use a hand piece on it because it starts gumming up the, the wax a little bit. So this is Harvest Dental wax. It's like 28 bucks or so for the, for the disc, but everybody makes every material that's out there right now. So ceramics, the only time I mill Emacs and the MCX-5 is usually overnight uh, where I want to load, I have a case with six units and I want to I can't be there for it, obviously, so I'll just go ahead and load them all in there, have a mill overnight. All right, for zirconia, there's two ways to sprue. If you're spruing it like this, where you don't put zirconia in between each one, there's a slight chance something's going to break, either when you're cutting it off or whatever. I like to put some, a little bit of space of zirconia in between each one. I might be able to get one or two more units out of this if I were to sprue this way, but I just found that I've broken too many trying to cut them out in the morning before I had my coffee or something like that. So it's just best to be safe and, and not stress about it. This disc is about 10 minutes per unit to, to mill. So whatever many units that is. But again, I mill it overnight, so I never see it. Full zirconia, 
We hardly did any full zirconia before I got this mill, but now it seems like we're doing full zirconia, full roundhouses all the time. This particular case, the patient had a Bruxer bridge on the lower, and they had some particular disease where their teeth kept moving, and the doctor wanted to do a full zirconia bridge on the top. So I said, okay. He went ahead and scanned in the biocopy. What that is, that's a, that's a scan of what the patient already had or of the temporaries. In our software, we're able to open up the incisal pin in the articulator tools. The doctor wanted it a millimeter and a half open, so I just, or a millimeter open, I don't remember what it was. So I just opened up the incisal pin and it sets the pin for the rest of the case. Then I went ahead and designed it. All of our full zirconia now, we always require that we do a uh, temporary, and we just charge 40 bucks a unit for the temp, 40 per unit. Then we'll go ahead and cut these, off, cut these out, polish it up, have the doctor check the occlusion, have the patient wear it for a while. If they were happy and they didn't make any adjustments, then we'll just remill it out of zirconia. But if they had to make adjustments on the bite or whatever, then I'll have the doctor re-image and uh, redo the biocopy. All right, next, uh, this particular one, we, uh, we didn't have to make any changes, so I just put in the zirconia block and hit mill. This particular one was an Argen um, disc, very nice material. I would recommend once you buy your, if you buy an MCX-5, just go to all the reps and say, hey, I just bought an MCX-5, can you send me a sample? Almost every single company sent a sample. So I had like 15 discs to start off, so it was pretty cool, except Glidewell, they won't send you nothing. But uh, Argen is a pretty cool disc, it's, uh, it's very inexpensive. We use the uh, Zircon Zon pre towel Aquarelle liquids on it, because these come white, so you have to dip them or um, color them. So I just put the liquids in a little watercolor pens. This one was B1, so I just did the whole thing B1, and they have uh, three incisals, blue, gray, and violet. So I only have like five different cups of this material, but that's, um, I have A1, A2, and then the incisals. It took me about 10 bridges till I figured out where you're supposed to sprue these things. Um, they never told me in the beginning. So I was putting sprues on each one, or sometimes I'd put just sprues every other one. But I found if you just put one sprue on the bottom and maybe just one on the top, you're going to be fine. If you have sprues going on every single one, I found when they came out of the oven, the bridge would be broken in half. Or if you have them in weird places. But I learned the hard way. But I know I've done 20 of these minimum like this, and I haven't had one crack. You also can't run this on the speed program or the hour and a half program. Just I do it overnight always on uh, whatever the manufacturer's program, and I do a slow, I add like two extras, two extra hours of cool time on it. You always stand it up like this. You're not going to lay it down in the beads. It's made with a centering uh, bar with a stand, so stand it up just like that. Also, if you have a lot of sprues on there, they're a pain in the butt to cut off afterwards. Because, I mean, it's hard zirconia, so three sprues is fine. But if you have one on each one, you're going to ruin your burrs and probably break your bridge, which I've done many times. So three sprues is good enough. Hybrids, right now you also can do it the hard way. You have to wax it up first. This was a, I just bought two multi-unit abutments, waxed up the case, called it a two-unit bridge, and biocopied the wax up. Milled it out of, oh, then I made my own screw holes because right now we have to do it manually, so I just used a reduce tool, um, made my crowns transparent, drew where I thought the hole was going to be, looking down into the abutment. Then I reduced the case, then I used the four minus tool to go all the way down and make a hole in the crown and the mill will mill it out, just like that. This was Bruxer. 
So after um, I did, did the same thing, used the Zircon Zon Aquarel uh, paint on stains and then centered it. I was reading this the other day. It's very important uh, to me. Someone out there at the same time is always working hard. Someone is getting smarter. Remember that. There's absolutely no way around hard work. I mean, labs are closing all over the place right now. Um, a lot of my friends have lost their labs or, you know, the lab um, owners getting older, retiring. Things are just pretty tough. Um, what is going to separate your lab from other labs? I'm using CAD CAM for this. Um, I'm helping CEREC doctors. I'm not saying I'm not going away from them. I'm helping them use their machine um, because I want them to use me. You know, I want them to be dependent on me and when they have problems come to me. So that's kind of how I'm trying to separate myself. And uh, I want to thank you all for coming today. We have a fun uh, event at 4 o'clock upstairs in the bar. If you have not gotten your wristband yet, um, I think the exhibit hall is still open right now. Go to one of the Serona booths. You need a blue wristband like this. If you get a blue wristband, you can get free access to our party tonight. So hope to see everybody there and thank you very much.